Hello and dwarves, welcome to uh, Board Repair Basics. So in a recent video, I was repairing this. This is a Lenovo Yoga 530, and we had a dead short inside this laptop that was causing it to not switch on. Um, so you plugged in the power and there was no, uh, you plugged in the charger cable and there was no power in the laptop. So um, I highly recommend going to watch that video before watching this one if you haven't already. Um, although I'll summarize what happened in here. But um, I thought I'd make this video because it covers an interesting topic that I've been wanting to look at for a while. And that is, how do we repair without schematics? Because in the earlier videos in this series, the first thing I did was say, you need schematics and a board, uh, board view. Yet most of the recent stuff I've been doing on the board repair front has all been on non-Apple computers, typically where I've not had schematics available or I haven't needed sch schematics. So it begs the question, how did I do it? Um, how did I know where to find the fault? How did I know where to start looking? Because in the uh, early videos of this, on everything, I was walking you through circuit diagrams and everything to demonstrate how it all worked. So let's take a closer look at the board that I was looking at. So here's the main portion of the motherboard where I was doing all of the work in that video. And so firstly, to summarize what happened, uh, when you plugged in the charger, there was no life in the laptop at all. It appeared to be stone dead. And what had happened is we had a short circuit on the main power rail in the laptop. So uh, if we use the MacBook and, um, terminology, it would have been PP bus G3 hot or you know whatever the equivalent is called in this laptop. And it turned out to be a bypass capacitor on the bottom of one of our system on chip power supplies here. So here is our CPU. Here we have CPU V core. Uh, so this setup here, this is the main power supply into the CPU on this. And this is a secondary power supply into the CPU because a modern CPU will have what's called, uh, well, a modern CPU actually has like five, six, or even seven different voltage rails going into it to actually run it. It's really complicated to actually run one of these modern CPUs. They're horrendously complex. However, the two main bits that we care about are CPU V core, which is the big workhorse power supply, and the SOC power supply, system on chip which is sort of like the CPU controller circuitry. So the uh, the faulty capacitor was actually on um, the back of CPU V core here. It was probably about here on the other side of the motherboard. And this was a bypass capacitor that is designed to reduce um, uh, ground loop inductance. Um, so it's not there to, it wasn't there to um, stabilize the power supply. All of the bulk decoupling is being done up here closer to the CPU and on the other side of the CPU. So this is here to reduce ground loop inductance, which reduces the electromagnetic interference being emitted by the motherboard. However, that's a very complicated subject that I won't go into now. So, however, again, the question is, how did I know all of this without having schematics to show me? Because on the MacBooks that we looked at, I would point out a component on the motherboard, I'd say, what's that? And we'd go to the schematic, look it up, and I'd be able to say, look, there we go. We can see that this is X and it does Y. But we don't have schematics for this. So what I did was, again, we look for patterns. Based on everything we've learned in this, if we look at this motherboard, tell me what you see. So remember how we looked at, um, we looked at power supplies and we talked about buck converters. So if you have a look at sections on this board, what do you see? If we look here, we've got big inductors. And next to each one of these inductors, there are transistors, or in this case, MOSFETs. So we've got a inductor, MOSFETs, inductor, MOSFET package or controller or something of that ilk. Inductor, again, another controller chip, probably with built-in MOSFETs because the small power supplies don't need big, huge ones. Whereas over here, on CPU V core, this is a big power, um, a big power stage here. We've got inductors and big discrete MOSFETs that are much larger than these ones over here because these are high current stuff. So as you can see, we've got those same old patterns that we're used to seeing. So straight away, we can deduce that this area here is power related. 
And because we know that a laptop requires multiple different power rails to work, we've got you know the main power rail in the laptop, then we've got a 5 volt, a 3.3 volt, a 1 volt, probably a 1.1 or a 1.2 or something like that. Then you've got your CPU power supply. We know it needs all these extra rails, so we know there's going to be extra power stages scattered across the board. So by looking at these patterns, we can understand the rough layout of the board. Now, these secondary power supplies, they're going to be powered by the main power rail of the laptop. They're going to run off the main input. So that also tells me that there has to be power getting to these from somewhere. So how does it get there? Well, our charger input is up here, and all we have to do is follow the money. If we follow, if we look here, you can see that this, the positive pin of the charger jack here Go straight into this fuse. And we know this is a fuse just because A, that's what fuses look like. Another giveaway is it's got PF101 there. So um, P is just a common de designator. However, F is going to be fuse. And if you have a look at various other things, the same denominators are everywhere. You know, uh, U indicates a chipset, Q ind indicates a transistor or a MOSFET. Uh, we've got L's, L is an inductor. C is a capacitor, R is a resistor, and so on. So we can see that this is a fuse because it's PF. So it goes through this fuse, and again, if we follow, you can see the blue trace there. And it goes up to here, where we've got PL and PL. Now these are inductors, so these are um, inductors to reduce a sudden surge of power when you plug in the charger. It reduces the sudden rush of current. So we go through a fuse, we go through some inductors, then we reach an inrush limiter. And this is the same kind of system that we saw on the MacBook schematics that we looked at earlier on in the series, where we have a pair of MOSFETs in some kind of arrangement that's designed to allow the laptop to switch on or off the incoming power. And that's exactly what was happening in this laptop, is we had power all the way up to here, and then it stopped because the laptop was detecting a fault inside it and not switching on this MOSFET. And if we follow it even further, we can see that from this one, we then have a trace that comes around down to here, and then it goes on to here, and then we have a big resistor that's our current sensing resistor that bridges the output from this incoming power to the actual load. And again, you can see the trace go all the way down here. You can follow it with your eyes here, and so that's how I got all the way down to here. And then obviously from this point, I, I then said, okay, well, our power is stopping up here at the inrush limiter, why? So the most likely reason is that there is a fault on the, in, on, the, uh, on the load side of the power supply. So the first thing you wanna do is check if there's a short circuit there, which is what we did. So I put my multimeter into continuity mode and I found, firstly, I checked if any of these were shorted to ground, the inductors here and they were not, which tells me that these power supplies themselves were okay. However, when I touch the uh, input here, so this area here where we had the power rail that supplies these power supplies, we found that all of this was all shorted to ground. So that's how I got that far without having any schematics. All I had to do was use my general knowledge of how power system architecture in a laptop works and use my eyes to follow these traces through the board. And now we knew that there was likely to be a fault somewhere around here. And once we found that short circuit, now we know where to start injecting power. So that's where at the video, I started moving to power injection. So you can watch that video to see how I used power injection to then find the shorted capacitor once I knew where to attach the power to. Um, and that, obviously in the edited video, I'm jumping through all the dead zones. However, if you're trying this yourself, for reference, I probably spent, probably spent about 20 minutes to half an hour injecting power, just touching the board, looking for that fault. So it takes a while to do that. However, once we found it, we found our dead capacitor, we can then remove it, and then we can either leave it off the board if it's not important, like this capacitor wasn't, or we can replace it if it is an important capacitor, like it's a big workhorse capacitor like this guy probably is. So that is how we looked at this board without having any schematics at all, and managed to diagnose it without having any instruction manual at all. So the next question is, could you do this with anything? And 
that depends really. There are some laptops where you look at it and you can see these patterns clear as day. This is a great example of diagnosing without schematics. However, there are other laptops where you open them up and it's so heavily integrated that without actually looking up the model number of every single chip on the board, it's almost impossible to understand how it's all wired together. And that's often the case with the modern Retina MacBooks. Those are scary to look in. When you open them up, it's very difficult to see because they've now integrated it so much. Like um, you'll have entire power stages where you just have one chip that is a secondary power supply. And if you don't, you know, it doesn't have the characteristic MOSFETs and inductor on them and things like that. So that is where it starts getting difficult. But looking at slightly older stuff like this, this, well, this isn't even that old, this laptop. It's only about a year old. So even on modern stuff, you might find that, again, you can use these building blocks that we've been learning about to just look at a board and immediately understand the basics of how it works. We don't need to know everything about it. You know, I don't need to know what the pin out and what each pin on every one of these does. All I need to know is that that is a power supply and it's converting the 20 volt input rail here down to 5, 3.3 and 1, or probably that way around. And well, li likewise, I can probably deduce that this is the 5 volt rail because it's got two MOSFETs on it. So it's a, a higher power rail. So it's carrying a bigger workload, which is going to be the case on the 5 volt rail, as opposed to the 3.3 and 1 volt rails, which are mostly just logic. And so that is how I solved this computer and how I managed to fix this without having any schematics. So I hope that was kind of useful to you guys. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you all next time. Bye for now.